Three years ago, got into flying helicopters, and then I've decided to build my own helicopter. I've been working on this kit called a HeliCycle for uh, the last three years now, and I'd probably say I'm 70% uh, complete with it. Probably another year or two and I'll be done. If you buy an um, a aircraft, fixed wing or helicopter uh, and do at least 51% of the work, then you're able to get it certified uh, through the FAA and fly it. And in a lot of ways in aviation, with certified aircraft, uh, they have to go through so much testing that you, there really isn't a very good evolution in technology. And in the experimental area is really where all the new designs are coming from. So I'm able to have a, oh, a turbine engine in this, which uh, wouldn't be allowed in a certified helicopter. Uh, an engine alone like this in a certified helicopter might be over two or 300,000. This is just a little turbine engine that's used as a generator in other aircraft. And uh, you know, this engine's under $5,000. So there's a huge, um, economy when you're able to build it yourself. For me the hardest part about building the helicopter has probably been the feeling of responsibility of not screwing something up. The Helicycle factory requires that you have at least 10 hours of flight experience beyond being a helicopter pilot. This is a Robinson R-22 made down uh, near LA in California, and it's the most popular training helicopter uh, in the world right now. They require you have at least 10 hours in this very type of helicopter because it has the closest um, handling characteristics to the helicycle. I think that most people could do this. I'd say one of the hardest things is the ability to stick to a project to uh, not get discouraged. It's a, it's a ton of a time commitment, so uh, if you want instant gratification, this isn't the kind of project for you.